Tyson? Thank you. Okay, so pretty much me and Jesse knew each other at church when we were young. And I was invited to what birthday party? Her fifth birthday party, okay? And we were kind of friends, kind of. At church we'd be like, hey, nice to see you. That was kind of it. And then one day, I was, in, I was in fifth grade, and my mom got a call. And someone wanted to go to Golden Corral with her dad and wanted to bring a friend. And so I decided to go to Golden Corral with Josie, and that was it, pretty much. We just started hanging out every day after that, and we've been best friends ever since then. And now we're together like every day, and we can hardly separate because we just love each other so much. All right. Oh. Thank you for sharing that story. The moral of the story is Golden Corral brings great friends Amen. together. Amen. Never go wrong with Golden Corral. Well, every one of you that has a best friend. Maybe they're sitting next to you. Maybe they're not here today. Oh, no. All together. Aren't they sweet? No? Every one of you probably has a best friend or you have a friend that's a good friend. And you can probably tell the same kind of story about when you met your best friend. If you have a best friend that's been your best friend for years... I mean, ever since you were little, like that, those two, you have a story that you can tell. And here's the deal. If you love your best friend, you like to tell that story. If someone says, tell me about when you guys met, you want to tell. When, when married couples, hopefully couples who are married, your mom and dad, your grandma and your grandpa, hopefully they're best friends, okay? Because they are going to live the rest of their lives together, hopefully. <laughs> oh, it's kind of funny, wasn't it? Hopefully, they're best friends. And they like to tell the story about when they met each other. And they can go way back and they can tell that. They have a story about when they met. Let me tell you something. Stay with me here, all right? Focus in. Because tonight, I, I, I have a best friend or two. Like I said, my wife is my best friend. My, my girls are best friends with me. And I have some other friends that are really good friends. But I've shared with you this week, there's no friend that I have in this world that is better than Jesus. Amen. He is the best friend that I will ever have or that I could ever have. And tonight I want to tell you my story about when I met my best friend. See, when I was a young boy, uh, my dad was a pastor. I went to church every time the doors were open. You've heard that before. And it's true. I mean, if the doors were open, sometimes when the doors weren't open, I was in there. All right? Uh, I would be over there and people weren't there and I was at the church. We lived right next door to the church. I was a, a church rat, if you want to call it that. I was always over there doing something. And so I heard about Jesus every single day. From the moment I could understand words, from the moment I could speak words, I was hearing about Jesus. And I knew all about Jesus. The key there is I knew all about Jesus. I knew Jesus up here. I knew who he was. I believed in him just like we talked last night. I believed that he was who he said he was. I believed he was the son of God. But I had never met Jesus personally. And he wasn't my best friend. Until one night. I was at home one night and I was actually, it was, it was bedtime. I was in bed and I woke up. I mean, I was a young boy. <laughs> but I woke up and when I woke up, I just had this feeling in my heart. And I was saying to myself, what if I die tonight? Now, let me tell you, it's not normal, not normally when you're that young. I mean, when you get old like I am now, you might think, well, what if I die tonight, right? Because when you get old, that happens, especially if you're as old as some of these guys in here. But when you're a young boy, you don't think about it that much. You don't just wake up in the middle of the night and say, what if I die tonight? If I die tonight, what's going to happen to me? And the, and the, the, the thing about me was... I knew, because I had heard the gospel, I knew about Jesus, I knew about heaven, I knew about hell, and I knew that night that if I were to die before I wake, that I would not spend eternity in heaven with God, but I'd spend eternity in hell. And that opened my eyes, and for the first time, I mean, I'd heard all about Jesus so many times, but for the first time, I realized that the gospel was for me. I realized that Jesus died for me. He didn't just die for everybody, and it's not just a story to tell in Bible school. 
I realized that it wasn't just something that somebody else encountered. It wasn't, everybody else seemed to have a story, but I didn't have a story because I'd never really met Jesus personally for myself. And so that night, and I, like I said, nobody had to, nobody was there with me. Nobody, I didn't have to call anybody. I didn't even go get my dad. I told him later. I told my mom and dad, I went and told him. But at that time, it was just me and God. And I knew what needed to happen. And right there in my bedroom, I laid on my bed and I asked Jesus to come into my heart and save me. And I turned my life over to him. And I said, I want you to be my Savior and my Lord. My life is yours. I want to turn away from my way and turn to your way. And I put my faith and trust in Jesus. And I'm going to tell you right now, that was the best night of sleep I ever had in my life. Amen. I laid my head back on my pillow and I just said to God, it doesn't matter if I die before I wake or not because I'm going to be in heaven with you. I knew that God had saved me. And I know that is the very moment that I met my very best friend. And my life has never been the same since. I was just a young boy. It wasn't like I was, you know, a, a horrible person. It wasn't like this radical change like you see in the Bible when Saul became Paul. He was a murderer and, and, and a persecutor and all these things. It wasn't that kind of thing, but it was a change in my heart. And when I put my faith and trust in Jesus, I knew that I was his forever. And all the things that I've been talking to you about, all the exciting things about who Jesus is and how he's your best friend and... How he'll never leave you and he'll never forsake you and how he'll never stop loving you. I can say those things to you with joy in my heart because I know he is my best friend. And I'm not ashamed to stand up here and tell you that. I want you to turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Listen, when you truly love your best friend, you will want to tell everybody about them, won't you? If you're proud of your best friend and, they, and you love them with all your heart, you don't mind telling people. Whenever you meet someone, you say, hey, this is my best friend so-and-so. But that's my best friend. You do that. I want you to see what 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8 says. As Paul speaks to Timothy here. 2 Timothy chapter 1. I just want to read verse 8. And I want to just focus in on just a part of this verse right now. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. If you found it, just read along with me. It says this. Paul says to his good friend Timothy. He says, therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord or of me, his prisoner. But join with me in suffering for the gospel according to the power of God. Now, that second part of the verse is saying, he's saying there, hey, listen, if you're a child of God. And you speak out. You see, what happened with Timothy, what there was, Timothy was in danger. Uh, he was, they were always in danger at that time. And if they would speak out, there was always the possibility, just like Paul, he got put in prison, he got beat, uh, he got threatened. Bad things happened to him. And at that time, that could have happened to Timothy too. And that's what Paul was saying there. Hey, be ready to suffer. But I want you to focus in on the first part of that. Because he says, therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Paul is telling his best friend Timothy here to never be ashamed to tell others about his best friend, Jesus. Paul and Timothy were best friends on the earth. They were physical friends. I think they were very close. They were, it was kind of like a, a father and a son, actually. But they had a great relationship. They loved each other deeply. Paul loved Timothy. Uh, you can just tell in his writings when he writes to him, he loves him as a friend. But Paul also knows that he had no better friend than Jesus. And he was telling Timothy, because he knew Timothy, his best friend was Jesus too. And he was telling him, don't be ashamed of him. Don't be ashamed to tell everyone about Jesus. And he even includes himself there. Don't be ashamed to tell him about Jesus and about me, his prisoner. He's saying, look, don't be afraid to tell your story about Jesus and how you met your best friend. Don't be ashamed of your testimony. Don't be ashamed to testify of Jesus Christ. Listen, it, like I said, it was literally dangerous for Timothy to tell others about Jesus. It was a danger to him. But Paul urged him here not to be ashamed and to go ahead and tell it anyway. You go out and you tell everybody about this Jesus that you know. Paul even said, don't be ashamed of me. Like I said, he was Timothy's brother in Christ and he loved Timothy so much. And he said, hey, don't be ashamed to say that we're brothers. Be proud of who you are in Jesus Christ. If Jesus, listen to me. If Jesus is truly your best friend. And if you love him, you will take every opportunity that you have to tell others about him. You'll take every opportunity that you have to tell others about when you met him. Let me give you uh, 
a story. I like to tell this story because it, and some of you are going to say, who? But one time, I was in Springfield at Bass Pro Shop. And I was standing in line. And in front of me in the line, there was these guys with, with suits on. They had earpieces in and everything. I'm like, what is going on here? And I looked, and there were like two of them in front of me, and there was two of them up, up here, and there was somebody in between us, in, in between them, and I was like, who's up there, who's up there? And I, I look around, and it's President George Bush. Now, I, some of you guys are like, who's that? And he was the president back in the late 1900s. <laughs> back when I was a kid, all right? So you're going to say, oh, yeah, maybe we read about that in history books or whatever. But he was at, at that time, he was the president of the United States, and he had made a trip to Springfield, Missouri, and he had to drop by his favorite place to shop Bass Pro. And, man, I'll tell you something. I couldn't even get out of that place. I had to get on the phone. I had to call my wife. I had to call everybody I knew, everybody whose number was in my phone. And I said, you're not going to believe who I just met. I just met the president of the United States. Well, I didn't really meet him. I mean, I was, like, standing there, and the security guards were like, looking at me like, don't you get close to him. <laughs> but I tell everybody I met him because, I mean, I was close enough to meet him. And I kind of waved a little bit. I don't know that he saw me. But anyway, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it, all right? But that was, a, that was a special time for me. And I couldn't wait to tell everybody that I had seen, I'd been that close, and I had met, so, sort of, the President of the United States of America. I was so proud of that. And you know, when I think about that, how much more proud should we be to tell people that we have met Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, and that He is our very best friend and he, we know Him personally. We walk with Him and we talk with Him. He talks to us through His Word and through the Holy Spirit. We know Him. How excited should you be to tell everybody about when you met your best friend. You should be very excited. That's right. If he's truly your best friend, you should take every opportunity. Psalm chapter 22, verse 22. If you want to turn there with me, you can. I'm going to turn to it. Psalm chapter 22, verse 22. I'm just going to go ahead and read it for you. David here says, we talked about David this morning. Listen to what he says. He says, I will tell of your name to my brethren or to my brothers. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. I will tell of your name to my brothers. In other words, to my friends, to, to, to my, my co-workers, to my, what, whoever I know. I will tell them about you. And I will praise your name in the assembly. That means like we are here today. That means like standing up in church or standing up in a group of people and saying, listen, I am not ashamed. I, listen, I know for some of us, it's hard to speak in front of people. For some people, I mean, if you take speech in school later, you're going to find that out. That if you have a fear of that because your knees are going to start knocking and you're going to have to stand up in front of the whole class and make a speech. And some people just hate that. But as scary as that is sometimes, and as big of a fear of th that that is, if you're ever going to stand in front of people and tell them something, it should be about Jesus. You should never be afraid, never be scared, never be ashamed to share the name of Jesus. And when you get an opportunity to share, you share it. That's what David says in Psalm 22 here. He says, "What well, basically, I can't help telling others about God. I can't keep from it. I want to stand up and I want to shout it from the mountaintops. David loved God so much that he couldn't remain silent about him. I'm asking you tonight, do you love him that much? Do you love Jesus that much? Is he? Are you that close to him? And is he really your best friend? Like I said, Many of you are not afraid to tell who your best friend on this earth is. Your best friend, your best physical friend. Josie and Maddie weren't afraid. They weren't ashamed to stand up here. When I asked them, will you come up and will you share about when you... They're not say, well, I don't want to tell about when I met her. I don't even like her. She's not... I, I don't want anybody to know about when we met. They're not going to say that because they love each other. They're best friends. Why would you ever be ashamed? And Paul tells Timothy here, don't be ashamed to tell everybody about Jesus. Don't be ashamed to tell your story about how you met Jesus. David testified in the assembly. He testified, I believe, wherever he was, just like Timothy did, just like Paul was. They didn't care where they were. Paul, if you remember, if you've read very much about Paul, Paul was testifying in prison. That's where most people would be curled up in a ball crying and saying, get me out of here, God. But Paul was saying, this is an opportunity for me. I want to tell all these guys in here that are in a closed space. They can't run away from me. I'm going to tell them about Jesus. What a guy. That's the way we should be in every situation. Let me ask you tonight, and listen, 
I want you to answer this in your heart. You don't, I don't want you to say anything out loud. Are you ashamed of Jesus? Pretty Listen, loud. if you're not, then the, the next question is, are you telling everybody you know about him? Yes. Because, see, sometimes we say, I'm not ashamed, I'm not ashamed, I'm not ashamed. And then we have an opportunity to tell our friends about Jesus, and we back off. Because we're afraid that they might make fun of us. We're afraid that they might not want to hear what we want to say. We're afraid that they might get angry with us and tell us to be quiet. We shouldn't worry about that. If you're not ashamed that he's your best friend, then certainly you shouldn't be ashamed to share about when you met him. That's your story, by the way. The time that you met Jesus. Some of you met Jesus for the very first time, and he became your best friend this week at church camp. You have a story to tell when you get home. Amen? You have a story to tell. You have a story to tell everyone about how you met Jesus. And those of you who are already children of God, who have already been saved, you've already given your lives to Jesus, you know he's your Lord and Savior, you know he's your best friend, you have a story to tell too. Not just those that got saved this week. Every one of you who are saved have a story to tell about when you met your best friend. I'm asking you tonight, will you tell others about how you met Jesus? Will you tell others about how much he loves you and how much he loves them? I hope that you will. Did you really meet Jesus? Do you really know him as your best friend? If he is your best friend, if so, then will you tell your pastor and your sponsors? That you know Jesus, that he's your best friend. Even not, not just those of you, listen, those of you who met Jesus this week, yeah, you better be telling everybody, hey, this is the greatest thing that ever could happen to me happened this week. I met Jesus. He's my best friend now. I've given him my life. I've been saved. He's forgiven me of my sins, and I know that I'm going to be with him in heaven someday. He is my Savior. He's my best friend. I hope that you've already told many people. Some of you, it was awesome. Wednesday night, some of you came up to me after the service and you told me what happened to you. You weren't ashamed. Some of you were a little bit timid because you're, you know, talking to an adult and, and sometimes that happens. But you told me anyway. You said, listen, I gave my life to Jesus tonight. I got saved. Jesus is my best friend now. And you weren't ashamed to tell me that. And that just, man, I'm telling you what that made me, that gave me so much joy to hear that. I'm going to tell you right now, when you share with your church when you get home, it's going to give them joy. So will you tell your pastors and your sponsors about how you met Jesus? Will you tell your group during your cabin devotions tonight? This is your last night for cabin devotions. Maybe you, if you got saved this week and you haven't told anybody, will you tell your, your group tonight your story about when you met Jesus? And those of you who were saved before you came to camp, will you stand up in your cabin devotions tonight and say, I'm going to tell you my story about when I met Jesus. See, that's good practice. Because I always say, if you can't tell your story, if you can't tell people about Jesus in a situation like this, in a surrounding like this, where everybody is here to learn about Jesus, and there's so many other Christians here, if you can't do it here, you're never going to do it out in the world. I'm encouraging you to tell your story about when you met Jesus. Will you tell your parents when you get home, and your brothers, and your sisters? and your cousins, and your aunts, and your uncles, and your grandma, and your grandpa? Will you tell all of them about how you met Jesus, whether you met him this week, or maybe you met him a long time ago, but you've never told them? This is the time. Paul says to Timothy, don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed to share your testimony, the testimony of Jesus Christ that is in you. Will you tell your church family when you get home? Your pastor is probably going to, your, your sponsors are going to urge you and they're, they're going to encourage you to, to go before the church and to, and to tell them what happened to you and to give your testimony about how you met Jesus this week. Some of you, like I said, that have already met Jesus before this week, maybe you want to go before the church and say, I want to tell, I, I don't want to hold back any longer. I've never done this before. I want to tell the church about how I met Jesus because he's my best friend. And I learned a lot of things about him this week. And he, I know that he's the best friend. He's the most perfect friend that I'll ever have. And I'm excited about telling you about him now. Let me ask you this. If you're not ashamed of Jesus, will you tell your classmates when you get back to school this fall? See, lots of times it's easy to say, yeah, we're not ashamed. Yeah, we'll tell everybody about Jesus. And then you get to school and you got friends and, and, and enemies, okay, people that don't like you even. And you get to school and everything changes. And you're saying, I ain't saying nothing here. This place is rough. These people don't want to hear. My friends don't want to hear. They'll make fun of me. 
They'll tell me to be quiet. They'll call me church boy or church girl. They'll talk, call me a Bible thumper. They'll make fun of me and say I'm some kind of sissy Christian. You know what Paul says here? He tells Timothy, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. You go out and you testify. You testify about Jesus and you don't worry about what happens. Even if you get persecuted. And listen, we don't get persecuted today. Not now anyway. We don't get persecuted like they did back then. Back then it was bad. And where, and where they lived and, and the situation they were in, they were persecuted physically. And it was a bad deal. But sometimes we don't want to tell anybody about Jesus because we're afraid of social persecution or mental persecution. In other words, people making fun of us. People saying, you know what, I don't want to be your friend anymore because you're talking about Jesus all the time. Paul says here, hey, don't worry about any of that stuff. You just go out and you testify about Jesus. Are you ashamed of Jesus? If you're not, then tell everyone you have the chance to tell. In Acts chapter 4, I want to turn there and I want to read this and then we're going to be done. Acts chapter 4, in verses 19 and 20. This is, this is one of my favorite passages. This particular place right here in Acts chapter 4. Because Peter and John say something here that is absolutely, in my opinion, it's amazing. And it just sits shivers down my spine. It gives me goosebumps whenever I read it. But I want you to hear what they said in Acts chapter 4. Verses 19 and 20, it says this. But Peter and John answered and said to them. Now, before I go any further, let me tell you what's going on. Peter and John had been threatened. They were out preaching about Jesus. They were telling everybody about Jesus. They were teaching about Jesus. And the authorities, which is the law, they had come to them and they said, Listen, you guys don't preach Jesus anymore. Don't tell anybody else about Jesus. I don't even want to hear you say his name to anyone or we're going to put you in jail or worse. So they had been threatened. Now, you and I... If that was us, I'm just going to say if it was me, it would make you think twice, wouldn't it? You'd be like, well, I'll still tell people about Jesus. I'll just keep it a secret. <laughs> right? That's not what Peter and John said. In Acts chapter 4, verses 19 and 20, listen to what they say. But Peter and John answered them after they told them this. They answered and said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to give heed to you rather than to God, you be the judge. For we cannot stop speaking about what we have seen and heard. You hear what Peter and John are saying here? They said, hey, listen, if it's right or not in the, in the name of God, because what they're saying is we're going to disobey the law here. That's what they're saying. So you be the judge of whether that's right or wrong. They're deciding that, hey, it's more important for us to obey God than it is you. And so after they say that, you decide, you be the judge about that. But here's what we're going to tell you. We can't stop. They didn't just say, we will not stop. No, no, we're going to be stubborn. We're not going to do what you tell us to do. Here's what they said. They said, we can't help it. We can't help it. We can't help telling about what we've seen and heard. They were so in love with Jesus. They were so excited about what Jesus had done. They were so excited about the things they had seen that Jesus had done. And they loved him so much that they said, listen, you can threaten us all you want, but we can't stop. That's the point where we need to be, isn't it? Isn't that where you want to be? Where if someone makes fun of you or if someone tells you to, oh, just be quiet. I don't want to hear about your Jesus anymore. You say back to them, I, you know, tell me, say what you want to, but I can't stop because I love him too much. He's the best friend I've ever had. He's the best friend that you will ever have. And you can know him too. That's what Peter and John did. <laughs> that, that, that's just exciting to me to hear what they said and how they replied. They said, we can't help it. They loved him so much. They were so amazed by what he had done for them and what he had done for others. They had seen him, all kinds of things he had done. He had healed people. They were just excited about Jesus. But even when they were threatened, they couldn't stop telling others about him. Listen, if you know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, you've learned this week, or maybe you already knew, but you've been reminded this week, that you have the best friend, the most, the perfect friend that you could ever have. You've been reminded this week that you have the best friend that anyone could ever have. Why would you be ashamed to tell somebody about him? We shouldn't be, should we? I'm asking you tonight, do you love Jesus? Have you met Jesus and have you given him your life by placing your faith and trust in him? By making him your Lord and Savior, by, by finding forgiveness and accepting what he did for you when he took your place on that cross. Is he your best friend? If he is, 
And go tell the world. Go tell everyone about him. Don't worry about what anybody thinks. Just tell everyone proudly about your very, very best friend. And tell them how you met him. And then, listen to me, then you can tell them how they can meet him too. That's exciting. You see, you, you tell your story and you, you tell them about how you met Jesus. And then you tell them about how they can meet Jesus. And guess what? They might give their life to Christ. They might put their faith and trust in the same Jesus that you did. And they'll have a best friend named Jesus. And then they'll have a story. Two different groups of you here tonight. They're the ones that already know Jesus. Some of you gave your life to Jesus this week. You're in that category. You've already been saved. You got saved this week. You gave your heart to Christ. And you know that if you were to die, you would go to heaven with him and you'd be there for all eternity. And you know that Jesus is your best friend. You know that he'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll never stop loving you. And you're happy about that. That's the group of people. That's one group of people. And that includes the ones that were already saved before you came here. And then there's another group of them. Those who have never given their life to Jesus. You see, the first group has a story to tell. It's called your testimony. That's your story. Every one of you that have been saved have a story to tell. You can tell a story about when you met Jesus, your best friend. And that story should be told as many times as you can tell it before you leave this earth. Some of you are here tonight and you don't have a story yet. Because you've never given your heart, you've never given your life to Jesus, you've never placed your faith and trust in Jesus, and he's not your best friend yet. Listen, for you, tonight can be your story. For you, tonight, if you feel the Lord talking to you, not just because you want a story, but because you feel Jesus talking to you through his word, he, he's been speaking to you this week, and just like Lydia, he's opened up your heart, and you've received the word, and you've heard the gospel, and you are ready to respond and give your life to Jesus. You say, listen, I've waited long enough. I'm ready to, to turn over my life to Jesus. I'm ready to give in. Jesus, I want you to take my life, and I want it to be tonight. Your story can begin tonight, and you will have a story to tell the world for the rest of your life about when you met your very best friend. Yes. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads and close your eyes, and we're going to have a word of prayer. And the praise team's going to come up, and we're going to sing together. But this is an opportunity for you. This is our last night together. We'll be here tomorrow morning, and we'll talk a little bit more. But if God has been speaking to you, not because somebody else did, not for any other reason than that God has been speaking to you this week, and you know that right now he's saying, look, whatever you are, whoever you are, I'm calling you, and I'm asking you to follow me. I'm asking you to give your life to me. I'm telling you that this is the beginning of your story. Tonight you can meet Jesus for the very first time. Maybe you've known about him like I did when I was younger. Maybe you've heard about him, and you can answer all the questions about him. But maybe tonight you need to meet him personally for the first time, and you need to give him your life. You need to let go of your life, turn your back on sin in the world and say, I want to go your way, Jesus. I want you to be my Savior and my Lord. If that's you tonight, in the next few moments as we begin to sing, I'm going to ask as the encouragers come down here and they're